Hey everybody, thanks for clicking that thumbnail. Welcome to Talking Habs. In the video today, I'm gonna to do a little bit of odds and ends. I'm going to include a preview for tonight's game because I missed the um, the uh, review for last game. So I thought I'd throw a preview in here. Um, and yeah, we'll do all that. It's gonna be a bit of a shorter preview than I normally do. But uh, we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about. Before we get to that, if you're a Habs fan like I am, and you'd like to see more Habs videos, Reviews, previews, well, I should start with preview, right? Preview, review, <laughs> live casts, all kinds of different Habs videos. Uh, please subscribe, ring that notifications bell. That'll get you your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge right here at Talking Habs. Let's get right into it. First off, I want to announce something I'm very happy about. I got vaccinated today, yesterday, actually. Yesterday, that's why I didn't do the review for the game, because I had to, it was a whole day affair for me, because I don't drive. So, yeah, so I got vaccinated, my first shot. I'm very happy for that. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I was going to do a live stream last night, but I was kind of feeling a little tired. Today, I've got, my arm is sore. That's about it. Last night, it was a bit sore, it's more sore today. I was really tired last night, so... But today, I'm not tired. Uh, I feel good, except for the sore arm. So, um, yeah, thumbs up to that. Let's get right into this now. So we'll do the odds and ends first. And the uh, first story is Cole Caulfield. Cole Caulfield wins the uh, 2021 Holy Baker Award. And that's the NCAA's uh, award for the best player in college hockey. So Cole Caulfield voted the best player in college hockey. The last Montreal Canadian to do that was uh, Blake Jeffreyon. Uh, but I do believe he was drafted by the Nashville Predators, so kind of, but he was still the last Montreal Canadian that had won a Hobie Baker award, but not drafted by Montreal. Okay, confusing. Uh, Cole Caulfield also makes his pro debut last night with the Laval Rocket, and it was a big game. Um, Let's see, what did he do? Uh, he had a, it was a great debut. He led the Rocket to a 5-3 to three victory over the Toronto Marlies. Great. I love it when it's Toronto. I mean, that's the Toronto Maple Leafs um, um, uh, AHL team. So he had two goals, one assist. He was the game's first star, and he also scored the game winner. And uh, the first goal, uh, the second goal was the game winner. First goal was a power play goal as well. And what a beauty. Typical Cole Caulfield. You know how they say, let's go this way. Uh, Alex Ovechkin, his office, right? On the left side uh, in the circle. Well, that's where Cole Caulfield sets up and he scored a beauty. Not only was the pass in the air, he was, and it was a one-timer. Think of that, about that. The pass came to him in the air. He knew where it was going to touch down and he one-timed it so fast you couldn't see it. You couldn't see it. I mean, go look at the replay. You couldn't see it. Uh, a beauty, top, I believe top... Uh, Top cheese, as they say, and just a beauty. Um, he had, uh, like, a, a, his second goal was a different goal. I didn't really see that one, honestly. I think so. But it was different. His assist, he was coming and getting into the dirty areas. The assist, he, uh, he found room, got into the front of the crease, tried to dangle, and got the puck knocked off his stick. But... Uh, Willette was there to bang home the uh, um, the puck for the goal. So just a beautiful game by Caulfield. He showed, yeah, he can shoot. Uh, he's not afraid to go into the dirty areas. He can find the space to do that. And I thought that was good. So does do the Habs call him up right away? No, let's not let's not be crazy. I got to figure you're going to see him play anywhere from three to five, six games before he's going to get called up. That's my opinion. Um, they, the Rocket have a, a period of time in the next two weeks where they don't play a lot of games. Um, so sometime in there, after he's played a few, I think maybe they'll call him up um, just to see what he's going to do here in the NHL and see if he can stick around. So we'll see how that works out. But Cole Caulfield, just an amazing debut uh, for... Uh, for any player and um, just looks great looks great for the future uh, Paul Byron on waivers uh, as I'm filming this I did not find out whether he cleared or not I expect him to clear but you never know so um, as a matter of fact you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pause this for a second I'm gonna go check Nope, still no word on it. Uh, and it's 12.30 now, I'm filming today. Um, surprise, there's no word that he's uh, cleared or he hasn't cleared. So I don't know what that means, but he's on waivers. The reason is he played nine games uh, since the last time they cleared him um, or they waived him. And I guess they wanted to do it a little bit early. That's what I heard uh, before the trade deadline day because if he plays tonight, which he's scheduled to, um, they'd have to do it anyway. Um, and they just wanted to do it in advance, I guess, to know whether... 
what the, you know if he gets picked up or not and what the plans are i guess that's what it is but uh so no word yet let's hope he clears uh monday's trade deadline day as i uh, just alluded to trade deadline um okay so if montreal makes a trade on trade deadline day i think i'll go live then i don't know if i will because like i don't do the whole nhl so I don't expect, first of all, that there to be a lot of activity, and I'm not sure Montreal does anything, honestly. So if Montreal makes a move on trade deadline day, I will go live for a couple of hours. Now, the reason I'm not just doing it offhand is uh, because I, there's a game at night. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs is a big game. I'm going to be live for a few hours. So if I don't have to, I'm going to maybe not. So we'll just see what happens during the day. Look for it. I, it'll be probably around... 12, 1 o'clock if I go on for a couple hours. So let's see if Montreal does make a move. Apparently, uh, uh, Bergie is uh, active looking for a defenseman. And uh, yeah, remember also, trade deadline day. A lot of teams that make these big moves and bring in somebody, they don't necessarily help them win a cup. It's not often. And, and usually the teams that don't do much on deadline day actually do better in the playoffs. So let's see what happens uh, that way. So everybody who uh, doesn't like the reverse retro jerseys and thinks it's a curse, well, it's a reverse retro jersey night. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Listen, uh, they won their last game when they played it, played with them, so I don't think that's really a thing. But they're wearing the reverse retros tonight, and uh, let's hope for the best. I don't think there. First of all, I don't think there's a curse on anything like that, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> Happy birthday to former Hab Donald Dufresne. Um, he was a member of the 1993 Stanley Cup winning Montreal Canadiens. Not a, like, not a full-time, um, I remember they had to get him in a couple of games to get his name on the cup, if I'm correct. But he was a defenseman, he played a few games, and, uh, yeah, he was a former have and a Stanley Cup winner. So, happy birthday, he's 54. He's 54 today. All right, let's get to this, um preview for the game. So the Jets are here again for the second game of two games. Montreal lost the last game, another disappointing loss, 3-2, to two, almost a carbon copy of the game before against the Oilers, where the Jets, or the, the opponent, scores really early, and then Canadians counter it pretty quickly, and in the end, lose 3-2. to two. That's what happened. <laughs> so the Jets are 24-13-3, 51 points, and still in third. Montreal 17-11-9, and 9, 43 points, stuck there a bit, uh, and still in fourth. Now, goals per game. Uh, Winnipeg 3.23, so that's ninth, and Montreal 3.16. That's 12th, but that's barely a difference. So I don't think there's a, an advantage of offense-wise, except that lately Montreal seemed to, struggling, uh, seemed to be struggling to get the offense. But if you look at the numbers, no advantage there. Goals against per game, 2.68, 10th for Winnipeg, 2.70, 13th for Montreal. I mean, that's virtually the same. So no advantage in goals for or goals against if you go by the numbers. Power play uh, percentage, 25.2% for uh, Winnipeg for 5th, 20.6% for Montreal for 16th. Since Dominic Ducharme took over, uh, I believe under Julian it was 18 point something percent, and Dominic Ducharme at this point is somewhere around 25%. So, it's an improved power play. It's in the same area as Winnipeg's, but if you go by the numbers, and lately they haven't been able to score on the power play, so advantage Winnipeg. PK, 80.4% for the Jets, 12th, uh, 12th in the league. 77% for Montreal for 23rd in the league. It's an advantage. Some nights Montreal's PK is fantastic. Some, some nights it's not. Lately it's been good. They haven't really been giving up much on the PK. So hopefully no advantage. But if you go by the numbers, advantage. Winnipeg, face-off percentage, face-off win percentage. 48.9% for Winnipeg, 22nd, 49.2% for, uh, <laughs> for uh, Montreal, 21st. That's the first time in a long time, if at all this season, where the face-off win percentage, when we're facing a good quality team, and we're ahead of them. Now, that means that lately, Montreal's face-off win percentage has been really good. They've won, I think, like six out of seven games. They've really dominated the other team with the number. Um, so this means they've turned it around there, and i got to give the advantage. Even though the numbers are virtually the same, I'm going to give the advantage to Montreal because they have been, uh, last game it was 59 to 41%, so they really have been doing 
the job, and I'm going to give them that because there's no other checks there for them. All right, so uh, on the Jets side, Hellebrock, Hellebrock, Hellebuck or Braswa, I don't know. I haven't confirmed a goalie there. Uh, I don't know who it is. They're both good numbers. Hellebuck, you know, we're struggling to get goals against him. I'm hoping for Braswa. It would be nice to have a goalie that's, well, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Allen starts tonight. That's confirmed. Jake Allen will get his third start in four nights. Um, I'm a little surprised. Um, how does this work for Primo for his confidence? And like, okay, we got you here. It's probably a game you should, we should use the backup goalie. We're not going to. I don't know if that's a great thing. Uh, Otto Leskinen has been, uh, was brought up to the taxi squad. He's now in for Victor Mete tonight. So he'll be playing with Romanov on the third pairing. On the right side, Romanov on the left side. Armia and Sharat are skating together before practices. They're not ready yet. I saw some of Armia. He looks like he's got a little bit to go in the wind department. Um, you know, getting back in shape. So hopefully in the next week, something like that, we'll see. Um, either both of them or one of them return. New lines tonight because of um, he, he's juggled up a little bit, plus Leskinen is in. So the uh, line of uh, Tatar, KK, and Deneau doesn't get touched. Um, second line is now Perry, Suzuki, and Toffoli. So Anderson and Toffoli are switching lines, and so is Perry and Drew, I guess, actually, I think. Um, his third line is Drew Estall and Anderson. They, they've been switching up so much that I, I kind of can't remember. <laughs> so Drew Estal and Anderson for the third line. So that's three pretty good balanced lines, if you ask me. Um, good to see Stahl kind of dropping down to where he should be in the bottom six. I think he should be in the bottom six as far as center. Uh, fourth line, Byron Evans and uh, Lekkonen hasn't changed. And then the third pairing of uh, Romanov and Leskinen. It's the only change on defense. Let's get into these things. Tighter D. Is going to be something they need to have tighter D and keep the middle clear a little bit from in front of uh, Allen. Allen's been getting so many close in shots, and it, it seems like the opposition has free reign in front of the net. You got to stop that. Um, maybe Edmondson Weber isn't the freaking working. I don't know. At some point, when do you think he's going to realize that Edmondson Weber isn't working? When Sherrod comes back? And then it's going to be Sherratt Weber that's not going to work. I, I don't get it. I, I don't know what's going on. That's one big knock for me on what Ducharme is doing is I don't understand him not getting, putting a puck mover with Weber. Um, power play, score a goal maybe? So we talked about that. Power play hasn't scored a goal in a few games. So score a goal maybe. It might help. Uh, power play goal last game um, on the two tries they had would have really helped. So they got to start getting that power play going again. Allen, three starts in four nights over Primo. So I just worry that, um, although, look, he doesn't play. It's not like he's been playing every game up until this point. He's, I'm sure he's fine for it. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm not that worried. It's just let's hope that doesn't bite them in the ass. And maybe they're thinking, you know, look, uh, we need this win. Putting in Primo might be a little riskier. We don't want that to bite us in the ass. So they're going with Allen. And maybe Valen struggles. We'll see Primo come into the game. Never mind a hot goalie. And I mean that on the other side. We keep running into hot goalies. Is every goalie hot? Don't know. But never mind a hot goalie. Make him cold. So Hellebuck's been hot against us. If he's in nets, make him cold. Score against him. Find a freaking way. They've got to find a way to get some goals back. You know, they've been they, one of the top teams. I mean, what is their numbers here? Uh, goals per game is uh, their 12th uh, in the league. So it's not like they're, you know, they're struggling there, but they are struggling right now. Someone, and I list, Toffoli, Anderson, Suzuki, KK, someone. Put this team on your back and drag them to a win. Someone's got to do that. They absolutely have to, my phone. Yeah, so someone absolutely has to just, I don't know, find a second gear, do something, throw the team on your back and start scoring and I mean, just do something. They got to win. Um, these are wasted points right now. The schedule's not getting any better and it's going to get harder for them. And um, if they're, they're just wasting these points. They got to win some of these games. Um, Allen's been doing his part in all that. So you can't blame Allen at all. Allen's been doing his part. Probably the one player the whole season from start to finish you can't complain at all about is uh, been Jake Allen. And um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to go over in my head all the players on the team. I, you know, at some point during this, a game or here or there, but Jake Allen, it's every game. He's consistent. And, um, yeah, the next guy I think of is uh, Anderson and then Toffoli. Other than that, you know, but Jake Allen, he's done his part. He's been probably the most consistent um, of the halves this year. All right, we get to the point where we'll do the um, guess the score contest. I don't even normally do that in an odds and ends video, but since we're doing a preview. So guess the score for tonight. If you guess the score of the game uh, and you get that right and you guess the first goal scorer of the game, doesn't matter what team you pick them from, uh, you win a prize. It's $5. I'll put it directly in your bank account via Interact. Uh, eh, not a huge prize, but hey, one, it's just to guess the score. You do that by leaving a comment in the comment section uh, with your score and your goal scorer and um, we'll see how it goes in the game. So I'm going to give you mine right now because that's what I always do for the guess the score. Um, I don't know, did I sound positive during this or not? I don't know if I did or I was negative or I was so-so, but I don't have a good feeling here. Um, unless they turn things around and manage to somehow step up a gear and start scoring goals again, uh, more than two a game, I don't know how this is going to go. So I'm calling it, uh, uh, I don't like this, but I'm calling it 3-1 for Winnipeg and Pierre-Luc Dubois. As the first goal scorer, and if you notice, my Jofa bucket. <laughs> so this is the overtime uh, good luck charm. If we get to overtime, I wear that. I've got it here as a good luck charm, even though I'm calling the game for Winnipeg. So let me know what you think uh, of for the goal score overall for the guess the score contest in the comment section and any other comments you might have about anything that I said here. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That's my sore arm. It's not as good thing to do, and. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring that notifications bell. That'll get you your daily fix of Blue Blonde Rouge right here at Talkin' Habs. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please stay safe out there. Peace out, y'all. And I'll see you on the live cast. Live cast at 635. Uh, you'll notice it'll be up there somewhere. Okay, everybody, have a good one. Bye.